lovelies, welcome back to Art La Carte. And in this video, I'm going to show you two different things. One is how to draw something, and then the second is how I learned to draw that something. I get a lot of requests for drawing different kinds of animals, and today we're gonna to be tackling a rhinoceros, which is something that prior to this video, I have never drawn. So first, I'm gonna show you how to draw a simple kind of cartoony based rhinoceros. With everything, I like to look at shapes and build things up from um, basic shapes and then kind of carve them down into whatever it is that I'm going to draw. So for a rhino, I'm gonna take a nice rectangular shape, put it on its side. For the head, I'm going to use kind of a triangle shape. You'll see how those work. And during this part, I'm really messy. I'm not worried about getting a precise line. I'm just building things up. Like for the legs, I'm just gonna use some little tiny blocks on the bottom that come down just a bit more than the head. And this is my basic rhinoceros shape. If you're gonna build something out of building blocks, this is what it would be. Now, after you get to this point, now you can begin to kind of mold these base shapes into a little bit more rhinoceros shaped shapes. So we're going to put shapes over top of shapes. There's a lot of shapes in this video. So for the body, instead of using that rectangle shape, I'm going to put in three kind of big circles. This is going to be for the, the shoulders, the belly, and the rump or hips. Then I'm going to look at the kind of the head of the rhino and begin to carve out that, putting in the, where the horns would be. I know some rhinos have one horn, some rhinos have two. The one I was looking at had two horns, so we were giving him a big horn and a little horn. This is also where I'm going to begin to look at some of the details. So for his top of his head, there's a little bit of a bump. On his back isn't straight, it's kind of kind of like a little wiggly road that kind of goes up and down over his back. And then going down to those blocks for those legs to kind of flesh them out. Now what makes rhinos kind of fun to draw is they're like these armored tanks. And to help me see that, I'm gonna give a couple of creases, some folds in his skin. Last, I'm gonna add in some details like his tail and the legs on the other side. Again, this is super messy. I'm not looking for that perfect line. I'm just kind of carving everything out to see, do I have it the way I like it? So take your time with this part, but don't be like totally critical about your lines. Why this is important is if you put all your focus at the beginning, getting that really good line, then you're not looking at the overall picture as much and it's harder to erase something and fix something to get the proportions correct. So take your time at the build up part uh, before you move in to make those, those final lines. After you have the final lines in, you can add your details and coloring. I'm gonna add a little tiny bird because there's always usually some sort of little bird that sits on their back and eats the bugs off them and tweets when there's danger and everything. So that's my tutorial on how to draw a rhinoceros, but now I wanna show you what I go through to teach myself how to draw something. Prior to this video, I think I've drawn a rhino, cartoony rhino head, like once or twice, but I've never really studied a rhino, so this was a perfect example to show you the steps that I go through. The first thing I do is I look at life. If I can't see it in real life, then I look at photographs. Once I have a good reference photo that I wanna work off of, I'm going to find an overall shape that would identify this animal. So like when I draw horses, the base shape is a gigantic square. The whole horse can fit into that square. For the rhinoceros, it's a triangle. And then I divide that triangle up into other little shapes inside. Once I have that overall base shape, now I'm going to move into one of the many times I will sketch this rhino. So again, this one here is super messy. I'm using thicker pens and pencils to block everything in. The reason you'll see that my lines are a lot thicker on this pass through is it forces me to skip detail. If I'm having a thick marker that I'm drawing with, I can't go in for that really feathery detail. I just want to make sure that everything is kind of lining up where I want this. And so you're gonna see me kind of figure things out. I'm looking at the bone structure to see how how the skeleton works. This is a great time if you have an anatomy book about this animals to look and see exactly how the bones move, what's going on underneath the skin of whatever it is that you're drawing. What is underneath things is just as important as what you can see. 
Now, if I was just drawing a cartoony rhino, I might stop at this point because things don't have to be precise and measured and, and, and all that for a cartoon. Because for cartooning, you take everything and you stretch the proportions out. Um, but I really want to do a study on this to really understand what makes a rhino a rhino and so that I can draw a rhino realistically in the future. So here goes in for pass number two for my drawing. And immediately you're going to notice that along with the shapes that I'm building in there, my pin is much finer. So this is allowing me to get into a little bit more detail. I'm also looking at line connections, so where things intersect. So you'll see that the back legs at first are a little bit longer and you'll see that I will shorten those up or elongate the front legs a little bit. And then I'm coming into doing a part I love about digital art. You can do this with traditional art if you use tracing paper, but with digital art it's super easy. I'm going to take my sketch and I'm going to resize it over top of my reference photo. And what this does is it allows me to see where I'm drawing what I think I see as opposed to what is really there. So it helps me go, okay, my portion is off here. My body is way too short, so I can elongate that. Make those lines exactly how they're supposed to be on my own without tracing. Um, with tracing, it's kind of like training wheels. Yeah, you're kind of learning, but you're still heavily relying on the image underneath your drawing. Whereas this way, it's you're on your own. You can double check it, but you still have to make those fixes. So you'll see I'm jumping back and forth between this. If you draw digitally, whether it's on the computer or on your tablet or anything like this, this is a great way to do that. If you don't know how to make layers, I have a whole bunch of different videos on my channel about drawing digitally and making different layers that you can move around. So you can check those out. Or of course, you can ask me questions in the comment section below, and I would love to answer those for you. And you might think, okay, well, this sketch looks pretty good, but no, this is not the final sketch. Um, I'm gonna do another sketch and, and test. And, and I'll keep doing this until I can get an overall sketch that matches up. And you'll see the first time that I put this one over top of it, and the proportions are pretty spot on. Another tip that I would have for this is not just looking at your positive shapes, which your positive shapes are everything that you can touch, like so the rhino's body itself is positive, but also look at your negative shape, the shapes that you can't touch. So the spaces between its legs, between the leg and the head, underneath the belly, those are all positive shapes. And if you look at those, it can kind of help you to get things to match up as well. After I've done this, now I'm gonna add in my details. This is only step one in my drawings. With this study, I can now draw this exact rhino sideways, but I cannot draw him frontways or three quarters or with his head up. So I would repeat this process for all the different angles that I possibly can. Then after this process is over, then I would start trying to draw not based on a reference photo, but drawing my own compositions. I wanted to be able to learn to draw a rhino for a tutorial purposes, but if I ever decided to want to do like a rhino painting, I would probably then continue on. Whatever has importance in your art journey is worth the time and effort it would take to put into it. So for horses, I love drawing horses. I have spent not just hours, but literally years drawing horses, and I still have a lot to learn. In fact, with this rhino drawing, even just editing this video and watching how I drew it, I'm seeing things that I could improve the next time I draw it. I'm like, oh, the heads, I could fix this head. I didn't notice the slant in this line or, or things like that. So uh, there's never a point in my art journey that I stop learning. And there's never a point in my art journey that I think I have drawn all the things. I'm always learning. So when you see artists out there that you really appreciate and admire, um, things don't come easy, even for us that have been drawing for years and years and years. It's still a process of learning and practicing and failing and and getting better and pushing ourselves. So join us on the journey. If you're just beginning artist and you're just starting out, um, you can jump along with us and draw with us knowing we're doing the same thing that you are. In fact, I would love to see what you are creating at this time, where you are in your art journey. And if you're on social media, I will leave my social media information in the description box below. You can tag me in your photos. Um, I'd love to see it. If you're brand new to my channel, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And if there's an animal that you would like to see how to draw, uh, put that in the comment section as well. And who knows, that might be the next animal that I pick. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, God bless you guys. Keep drawing, being creative, being kind to each other, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!